sensual love as we get started. Okay. Welcome yourself to your practice and start with a little scent to set your space. And so today, um, any sense of releasing, so release is good, or any kind of clarifying kind of um, uh, scent that kind of makes you feel like you can get a clean slate, that would be a great one for today. Because um, we are within a couple days of our um, final eclipse of this eclipse season. And so it's going to happen Monday morning. Um, and so this eclipse, the last eclipse happened at the North Node, which is dealing more with things like new ideas, new insights, new revelations, but things that are coming in to help us kind of grow and up level and upgrade kind of the way we think and perceive. Um, and this solar eclipse that happens Monday morning is happening in the South Node, of the, which is dealing a lot with the past. And so with anything in the past in astrology, it's the stuff that we get stuck in a rut with. And so it's things that like give us rigidity in our thinking or judgment, um, judgmentalism, or just help it, things that we just get really thick into it. And it's hard to kind of get out because there's a lot of habit forming there. And so with Sag, it's places that we're um, prone to excess or prone to um, that kind of we overdo. So it can be some of them skills that we're good at, but yet overuse, they become kind of um, self-destructive or and impede us from going forward. So this time between now and Monday and, and soon after is a really good time of releasing, especially up until the winter solstice. We have that big conjunction. And so if you look in the night sky, you can actually see Saturn and Jupiter together. And these two big planets can join every 20 years. So it's a big deal. And they're moving into the sign of Aquarius. And I know we have at least two Aquarians in our community. Um, Kathleen and James, and we might have more that I'm thinking of, but um, with this Aquarian energy, right, um, it's kind of intense that it's happening, like all this energy is happening a lot with like elections and a lot of um, things that happen, like the Monday of like, the vote of the Electoral College, um, but it's really a big time of shifts into a more sustainable culture, into higher thinking, into growth and evolving, and so it's really good new energy, and these planets are bringing us into a new paradigm, so if you go back 20 years, this last 20 year cycle has been something of what we learn and distill and, and then we have to move into something new. So we have a lot of big energy in the next couple weeks. So um, it's such a great time to be um, mindful of what's coming up to be released, right? And so um, I know for me, this has been like super rich with all these kind of self revelations and things in which I realize that I've gotten stuck in and things in which I realize that I need to let go of or evolve because they keep me stuck in a pattern. Um, and look especially with things in relationship to time or to social ideals or um, um, kind of obligations or ways in which we maybe have to fit into a mold that maybe has never worked for us. So be really mindful of any of those um, kind of things that feel like habit also in your body places that feel stuck. So with Capricorn, it's like our joints, our teeth. Um, so knees come up a lot in Capricorn energy. So again, this is just a practice today and a practice we'll work on Monday to release. Think about clearing your slate. Think about kind of moving forward from a place of stuckness or heaviness to kind of clearing things out and allowing again that new direction to flow forth, okay? So that's what's happening. I'll write more about it probably and we'll, we'll, we'll um, really work with it on Monday. So go ahead and close your eyes and take a moment to really sit up tall and like root into your, um, whether you're seated or on your back if you prefer, but really get solid and just your awareness. And maybe start with scanning your body for any place that you do feel stuck or do you, that you do feel life is asking you to Maybe release something, take a new look, move a different way. That you maybe life's inviting in a more expansive view of something or a, a truth that maybe um, was inaccurate or outdated that you need to come to terms with. So just taking a moment to really um, allow this practice to be a way to really move energy on even from just a physical level to even a mental, emotional, spiritual level. And you can work with it in any way. You can work with it strictly physical. I have this 
stuck feeling in my gut or my shoulder or my knee. And it can be something as big as I feel stuck with how I spend my time and how I'm allocating time for the things that I really feel I need to value. So take a couple breaths and just allow yourself to meet that, right? This is a time, again, I've been encouraging us to all go inward and really feel and sense what's coming up. So just meeting whatever's here this morning that you want to work with. And we're going to start with just kind of an energetic cleanse. And so it's going to be, it's going to sound like a dog. You're going to stick your tongue out and do breath of fire. So your mouth will get dry. So you need to take little pauses in and out. You can. We're not going to do it too long. But it's going to be breath of fire with an outstretched tongue. And so just think about uh, kind of a detoxing, right? Anything in your energy field that you're like, oh, I need to get that out. Or just that intention that if you don't even know a part, just that intention, okay? So take a deep breath in. And all time us ready, go. Keep going. You can close your mouth, mouth from time to time. You need to swallow. Close your eyes and really channel that energy coming from deep within you. Old, stuck energy that needs to move. Keep going. Even noticing resistance that comes up or <clears throat> anything, right, that's coming up, that's good. Keep letting it come up. Keep focused. You have 15 more seconds. <laughs> Empty your breath out. Deep breath in and hold. And just let it out. Okay, we're gonna stand up. So I'm gonna continue just kind of again, clearing energy, so resetting. So kind of think of this as a way to just again, reset everything. So that shake that we've done before, so I want you to shake off the week. You can even shake off the last 20 years if you want <laughs> between this and the last. Shake off anything in the past, anything that feels heavy or stuck, and, and really focus your energy. If you have a specific part of your body that feels heavy or stuck, you can even just really channel that energy. It can bounce. Just try to do all the good shakes, roll your wrist and your toes. Shake off sluggishness, sleepiness. And then just land for a moment and just kind of feel your body. So feel from head to toe or from toe to head, just kind of notice your body, notice what's moving and shaking. So this next one we'll do again for a minute. And uh, what we're gonna do is you're gonna um, form, um, you're gonna, Grab your thumb and wrap your fingers around it so that you form a fist. And this is a funny one. Uh, I've been doing it in my kundalini practice and I really like it. It really shakes things up. So we're gonna do this for a minute and I'll show you the full thing and then you can modify it if your knees are tender. But we're gonna be punching the arms. And that's the most important thing is that you're punching the arms and really punching through and out anything that's stopping you from going towards your potential and your infinite self, and then the legs are just jogging. Okay, so if jogging doesn't work, march. Okay, but just keep moving your arms. That's the most important thing, okay? So take a moment, find again that inspiration to bust out and bust through and release past barriers and go. Now you can just breathe in and out or you can do that breath of fire. Go slow if you need. But just keep your arms moving, keep your body moving, and kind of just really resetting the energy field around you. If anything this week has shook you up or past month and you're like ready to just punch through it, release it, here's your chance. Anything that's occupying mental space, emotional space that's not helpful, Here's your chance, punch through it, 
bring it in, channel everything that you're meeting and bring it into the practice. You're almost there. You have about 15 more seconds. We are marching is fine. Five seconds. And bring your arms up, reach. Hold your breath, think about lifting from the soles of your feet through the pelvic floor, through the spine, through the neck. And then on the exhale, press your arms out and away. And just pause. And again, tune in and feel what that's like to shift and move. Find that kind of silence and stillness within those poses. We're gonna do a little half salute. So inhale, the arms come up. You can fold or you can bend the knees, however you need. Take a halfway lift. And again, I like shins or blocks. Widen your collarbones, come forward, exhale, fold. Then you can roll up or flat back up, inhale. Hands to the heart. Let's do it again. Inhale, sweep the arms, get long. Press down and reach up, and then exhale, forward fold. Long spine, inhale. Forward fold. And flat back or roll all the way up to your heart, exhale. One more time, inhale. Get really long and stretch, exhale. Halfway lift, forward fold, step down into your feet, roll all the way up, and then to your heart, exhale. This next one, you're gonna bend the knees so that you're in a weighted kind of mini squat. Knees are forward. We're gonna inhale as the arms come forward through the nose, and then we exhale, bring the forearms together and round through the mouth. Nose, mouth. Nose, mouth. Open your chest and your shoulders and then open the back of the heart. So do be as expansive as you can and feel your spine undulating. So the chest opens and the upper back. As long as a breath as you can do. As expansive and contracted as you can be. So really feel the differences in those two shapes. A few more. One more. And then stand tall for a moment, just kind of feeling that. You should hopefully feel a little bit more energy around the heart trunk. So this next one, we've done it before. You're gonna to step to the right. And it's a little side stretch and crossing of the legs. So I push down and I push up. So I get a nice long side stretch. And then I inhale. Then I step to the left, right leg behind, right palm up, left palm. So inhale, exhale. I like exhaling through the mouth. You're welcome to keep your mouth closed if that's better for you. Inhale, exhale. So try and imagine really elongating that whole side waist, getting longer. And that stretch extending through your hips even, so that leg that crosses behind, feel that outer hip opening. Couple more. And then one more. And then just pause. So feel that. <sighs> Settle into your stance and just noticing any shifts that happen physically, mentally, emotionally, just simply energetically. Now this one you're, I know you're familiar with. We put our hand on our heart. The left arm reaches back. We get a nice chest stretch and a rotation. Exhale to the right. So we inhale left, exhale right. And I want you to move your arms so that you feel that chest stretch. 
and really span your palm out on the hand touching your heart so you can feel your heart. Your body twists. Your legs are pretty stable and your hips can move a little bit because obviously as you twist your torso, your hips will move. So just feel that. And then maybe you close your eyes if, if you can, if the focal points need to do that and really stay steady in the center of your spine. So although you're moving, feeling that spine is that centering. When we twist, we start to integrate and to release. It balances the body. Four more. And then just again, shake it out. And then just stand for a moment, pause, let that energy settle. So this one, this next one's gonna look like the very first one we did. And so we're gonna do that same work. And then from here, we'll bring the back of the hands together. So we're gonna internally and externally rotate. So the palms reach back, thumbs down. Then the palm reach, the thumb reaches down the back of the hands. So this time we are doing an inhale through the nose and an exhale through the mouth. We're gonna, like you're sipping in uh, like a straw through the nose. Sip in through a straw, through the mouth, through the nose. Really rotating those arms, feeling your shoulders open. Two more. And then once again, stand tall. Drop into your steadiness, that awareness of everything happening. Okay, this last one's a little bit of squatting. So you can either squat with your toes forward and you can just squat back like a chair pose. If you wanna squat with your toes out and go a little kind of um, wider with the legs, you can. So it's inhale, arms up, exhale, arms forward, okay? So it doesn't matter how deep, just time it with your breath. Inhale, exhale. So I'm counting for us. If you're squatting with your toes out, make sure your knees point in the center of your foot. So be really careful. Keep that breath really deep, you're almost there. Four more. It can be quick or slow. Hold down in your squat, so either your elbows on thighs or you're here, breath of fire last time. You can even be here. Close your eyes, pump your navel center. Look, is at the center of your body. Five seconds. And then all the way up, inhale, and then at your heart. Release your hands, and again, pausing. You should feel some nice heat maybe traveling through your body. So now we'll do a little tapping, just again, keeping all that energy kind of uh, 
kind of felt in your body, just tap. So I start with my legs and I just get a little tap. And imagine this like waking up, energizing. If you wanted to rub your hands together first, if you weren't really feeling that energy, you can do that first. And then especially if you get to like your knee and like my right knee has been kind of acting up, I'm, I might give a little extra attention there. Tap the thighs. Sometimes I like to kind of give a lot of attention to the hamstrings or if I get to the hips. If the hips have been kind of tight or cranky, if the pelvis are a little lighter, low back, kidneys, adrenals, be gentle. Maybe there's a good firm pat to the abdomen and digestive tract. Little tap, taps to the heart. And I like to kind of use more of my index and middle finger and tap around like the collarbones and the sternum. Imagine just kind of waking up the heart space. Go down your arms. Any shoulder stuff, give an extra little tap. Neck. Face, I usually use my fingertips and just kind of, especially if you've had tension in your head or headaches, maybe a little extra tension where you felt that. And then at the very end, just kind of a little bit of massage. And then kind of imagine this like waking up new insight, perception, awareness. And you might just even rub around the third eye. And then again, flick your fingers and toes. Okay, and then we'll take the legs a little wider, inhale, arms up, and then exhale, bend your knees like you're grounding that energy through the center line of your body. And then from the earth, bring it up to your heart. Out and away. Pull it back to your heart, ground it again. And then straightening the legs, lift the arms up. And then exhaling, hands at the heart. You can have a little soft bend and then bow towards your hands and your heart. Form your intention today. Put your palms up. Think about your intention. And this can be an intention for this practice or even the next 20 years or even just in preparation for this eclipse. Feel your creative energy, feel your life force and the power you have to direct it towards that which you are focusing on, that which you want to attract and create. And then turn your palms out and like you're sending an orb of energy out from your body into your field. Take it out and away. And then as you're ready, step to the top of your mat You have your blocks handy. Uh, if you'd like, and then we'll sweep those arms up, nice big stretch, and then exhale forward fold. Stay here in a forward fold for an extra bit of time, so hands on blocks if you need, and really shake your head out, you can nod, you can sway, first time to stay in a forward bend, maybe some sighs. And then left knee down, right knee down. We're gonna inhale, cow posture. Exhale, cat posture. We'll go a little quicker. Just to wake up the spine. And now hold it on the inhale. Pull the heel of your hands back, broaden across your collarbones, so your pelvis step forward. Really reach your chest out of your spine. And then exhale, press into the palms, cat your back, feel your core activate, tailbone lengthen, neck heavy. And then inhale, all fours. Tuck your toes under, downward facing dog. Then the first one, so feel free to bend that left knee, press that left palm vigorously into the mat and try to ground that right heel. Heads heavy. And then switch, bend the right knee, really vigorously press from the right armpit to the right uh, palm, and then ground through the left heel. And then you can straighten both legs and then just hang in your 
downward facing dog for a moment, heads heavy, hips releasing back away from the spine. And then inhaling to plank pose. So you can put your knees down if you'd like. Exhale all the way to your belly. Then inhale to a cobra. Exhale to child's pose. Inhale all fours and we'll do one cat cow. So inhale, exhale, inhale long spine, exhale down dog. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Inhaling to plank. And again, set your knees out if you need. Exhale, chaturanga to your belly. Cobra pose, inhale. On your exhale, press back to child's pose. Come to all fours. One time cat cow. Long spine. Downward dog. Full breath in. Full breath out. And then inhale last time, plank pose. Chaturanga to your belly. Keep your chest proud. Cobra. Child's pose. Inhale all fours into cow pose, cat pose, all fours, down dog. Breathe in and out. Take your right leg and lift it up and back behind you and feel a big stretch from that right heel from that right palm. Then bring your right leg forward between your hands and ground for the left knee and then rise up and hook your thumb. Remember which thumb's on top. And then lift up and take a stretch over to the right. Kind of use that right or that right arm to lengthen the left. And then lift up and go to the left. So using that left arm to lengthen the right, you can let your head fall on your bicep to support your neck. And then deep breath in, inhale. Then exhale, hands to the mat, and then you can pop your back foot flat and fold, or you can lift your back heel up. But it's a parsvottanasana, so we want to have a, a hamstring stretch. The right hip hugs back and in, ground that left heel, and just fold. So I want to feel that right inner psoas line from the right pubic bone to the right heel lengthening, as well as from that left side, from the left inner heel. A lengthening and the legs press apart. Remember, you can have your back heel lifted and you can even have your back knee down if you want. And then as you're ready, you're going to come up to a halfway lift and all the way up. Take your arms out, thumbs up, inner rotate, either grab opposite elbow and lift your chest. So really stand into your back leg and lift your belly. So I'm going to really lift out of the lumbar so that I'm going to feel strong legs, strong hips. And on the exhale, pour forward. You can either keep your hands here and come into a standing split, or if you need to have your hands down or at least one hand down, do that. Otherwise, they're here in reverse prayer. Firm your right hip in and back and keep your right inner thigh line nice and charged. One more breath, and then both legs standing, top of the mat. And then take a deep breath, and uh, this time I'm just going to say grab onto your right wrist, lift up, and then take a side stretch. So just big side stretch. And then lift up, grab the opposite wrist, and side stretch. and then both arms come up, and then exhale, hands back behind you. So if you can take a bind, take a bind, otherwise you can grab onto your waist, elbows back, and then take a deep breath and step back with your left leg and come into a high lunge. So again, punching those knuckles back for your chest. You can bend the left knee and kind of notice what that's like, or you can feel that back heel lift, that thigh bone lift, and notice if that gives you a nice big stretch there. Nice deep breath in and nice deep breath out. 
And then just releasing the hands down to the floor, plank pose all the way in your belly. Uh, Sphinx pose, so elbows are gonna come down, uh, elbows under shoulders and lift the chest. Plug into those legs and really get some space here. And then extend the arms forward, palms up for a kind of prostration, kind of like that surrendering devotion. And then as you're ready, take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Take your hands underneath you, press up to plank and then to downward facing dog. And then just kind of settle in here, feeling the space that you might've created in your chest, your shoulders, your hamstrings. Take that left leg up, feel for a moment the press from the left palm, the reach of the left ankle. Step your left leg forward between your hands, right knee down, pad your mat if you need. So if you had uh, your traditional thumb in front, switch. And now lift up so you feel that kind of gentle, kind of lift from the core energy out of the hips. And we'll take a side stretch to the left. So using that left arm to lengthen the right side a little more. Feel free to rest your bicep. And then inhale, come up, and then we'll go to the right. Okay, and then hands are going to reach down to the floor. So remember options. Can I can just straighten my leg? I can just straighten the back leg, heel lifted, or I can pop that back foot flat for Parjvottanasana. So what happens here is the left hip tends to swing wide. So pull your left hip crease back so the outer left hip moves to the right a bit. And then as you are feeling your core lift up, so your pelvis gets a little lighter, you can kind of steer that right hip point forward and down. Kind of watch what's happening through the legs, especially from the knees to the ankle. Where are you feeling the earth beneath you? Where can you surrender the weight of your spine? Nice deep breath. And then coming up halfway and then all the way up. Okay, so the thumbs reach up. And then internally rotate the arms to grab onto your elbows or some of you can do that reverse prayer if that works. So as I lift up and I tip back, I don't wanna compress the low back so I have to really lift from my core, from my heart. And then you're gonna bow forward. So remember you could do more like a warrior three if that's better or you can go all the way down. And again, if you need your hand down, maybe one of them down, that's totally fine. Same work that we did in the lunge, the left hip brain comes back and in, right inner, um, the left inner thigh line roots. And then both feet touch all the way up, inhale. And then you're gonna grab onto that uh, right wrist. This time the right hip is gonna step behind and we're gonna do that same side stretch, but now with the hip stretch. So let that right hip really go to the right. You can bend the left knee a little bit if you need to get that full line of energy. And then switch. So just like we did the warm up, the left foot behind, grab onto your right wrist, lift up, let the left hip kind of bow to the left. My right knee bends a tad just to help that. And then again, the hands come back to either grab the waist, fingers forward, thumbs back, or you can interlace the hands. Right leg steps back and we do a high lunge. And I want this to be a really expansive one for your chest and for the front of your right hip. So as much as you can, punch those knuckles back. Feel strength in your legs. Feel that lift of the chest, that openness of the front of the right hip. And then free the arms, come down to the floor, plank pose. Then on the exhale, all the way to your belly. Sphinx pose again. This time, if you want to straighten the arms, you can. Otherwise, you can just keep the elbows down underneath your shoulders. Pull the elbows back, lift the heart. Firm your navel. And then the arms come forward, palms up, forehead touches the mat. Just again, bowing, devotional, surrendering.
Then walk your hands in, plank pose or child's pose, downward facing dog. So we'll move now into some twists to kind of release. Some nice deep breaths here. Shake it out. We'll take that right leg up and back. This time we'll go knee to our nose and cat the backs. So lift up, cat back, bring your knee in, lift your heel, feel all that core energy. And then step your right foot down. So just like we've done before with the cat back, I want you to bring your nose to your knee. See if you can do that. So feel that contraction as you push the floor away with your palms, lift your upper back. If this is enough, stay here. If you want a little bit more, float the left leg. But I want a big contraction. So we're trying to wake up the core before we twist. For three, for two, and then set that foot down. If it's uh, lifted, knee down. Then I'm gonna put my hand on a block, right arm lifts up. Then I scan the horizon to twist and open my shoulders, turn and face down, inhale. And then I scan the horizon. Look forward, big circle, two more. I'm letting that left hip stretch as I do this. And then one more. And then this time as I kind of stretch and open, I might move my block to the left a little bit more. And then I really kind of let my head go where I look down and I let gravity open my right chest and shoulder. So I'm, I am vigorously pushing away from the block so I can turn my chest. And I can let my head go or look down. But the point is to really have a deep twist through your core and a nice open chest. Okay, one more breath. And then both hands go inside the right foot. Spin your left foot flat. And now you're in a warrior two. So this one is a good one for the groin. So I have heel to arch. And I walk towards the center of my mat. My left hand can go to a block or the floor, my right hand presses into the right inner thigh and I press forward and away from my big toe light and I lean to the left. I lean to the left. So I'm pushing into my feet. I'm pulling that right hip back and in. So there's a lot of work in my hips here. And as I press my right thigh away and forward, I lean to the left and I get this nice low back stretch side stretch. You have three more deep breaths. Really breathe into that release. So the exhale, just let kind of that heat warm and release. Okay, come back towards the front of your mat so that you're in a high lunge. So from here, we're going to go arms up and you're going to grab like you're grabbing onto something in your hands. And this can be like something that you feel like you've been holding on to, or it can be something that you want to, uh, that you feel it's heavy and you want to let it go. And you're going to go, ah, and you're going to throw it and dive forward. And you're going to come back up, grab onto something else. They can even just be like distractions. Ah. Three more. Grab it. Breathe it in. Ah. Toss it back. Take it up. Ah. And I'm sticking my tongue out. One more. You got it. Take the left arm forward, reach the right arm back, and then windmill into a warrior two. Then I'm going to switch sides for you. Okay, take a moment in that warrior two to relax the shoulders back and down. Breathe. Then you're going to straighten that right leg. If you need to adjust your stance, remember we want heel to arch. We want strong downward pressure and outward pressure. Okay, we're gonna let the hips tip back. So my left hip will tip forward and I've got strong lengthening feeling out of my core. And then I'm just gonna do that side bend and I'm gonna grab onto my inner thigh if I can, or just reach it this way and drape. So I want you that whole left side to drape. So it's okay to let your head be heavy. What has to be really strong is from here down. Otherwise, you're going to feel that holding. So do your best to let the head go. Feel like the quivering that happens. Feel the head want to get tense so it can control and just keep melting. 
it's a weird shape and it's not necessarily pleasurable. You know, it, there's like different sensations to meet. So just keep meeting them. Three more. Maybe some sighs or open up exhales. One more. And then bend the right knee, reverse your warrior. And if you like holding onto that wrist, you can do that again, letting the head go. And then take a really deep breath. And then we're gonna cartwheel the hands down to the floor, left arm down, right arm up. One more twist. You can look down. You can even take that right arm over your ear, which is one of my favorite ways to really feel that side, whole side body stretch. For three, for two, and then both hands down, plate pose, all the way down, chaturanga. Rolling cobra, kind of like a twist. So the right shoulder lifts and the left, and then the right shoulder drops and then the left. Then start with the left. Left shoulder back, left chest, right, and then left. One more time each side. So really feel that rolling articulation. Kind of opens the shoulders and the core. And then one time cobra, you can float the legs if you want, turn it into locust. And then exhale, pressing up to plank, downward facing dog. Go ahead and breathe, open mouth exhales if you want to kind of feel all that activation. Okay, that left leg lifts up. Then we go knee to the nose and we hold it. So I drop my head, I elevate my upper back, so I'm pushing away from the floor, my heel draws up. You have all that activation and then left foot down and forward. So kind of keeping that same feel, I'm gonna bring my nose towards my knee. It doesn't matter if it actually touches, I just bring it there and I elevate upper back. So you could use for sure hands on blocks if that helps. And then I can just stay here and I want you to feel a lot of core or if I want more, I can lift the right leg. But I want you to feel all that drawing in of energy. Like it's forming a ball at the center of your navel. Concentrating your creative energy. And then as you're ready, release it out. Knee down. And then I'm gonna take my hand on the block and turn it out slightly. Left arm forward, thumb up. Then I draw a big circle. Bring it forward and then reach it up and away. Take your time. Really let that right hip relax. Hmm. Opening up, mobilizing energy. And then this time we stay. And so I'm going to lean back. So I might move my right block over to the right a little bit more so that I can really turn my waist and like gravity open chest. I could do a neck release or look down. And really supporting myself so that I can lift and spiral, but also release. Okay, then both hands down to the floor. And then you're gonna to come towards a warrior two. So remember it's heel to arch. Then I walk myself to the middle of my mat. So it's gonna feel weird, right? My left leg wants to follow, don't let it. Right hand in a block, left hand, so I'll show you this, maybe this way this time. My left hand pushes out in the way and I lean towards my back foot. So I've gotta be really mindful to bring my left hip back towards my right heel and towards my block. Then I lean away. So there's a pushing out of my left inner thigh to give it a groin stretch and there's a nice release of my low back. So feel all that work that's happening in the legs. Breathe into it. Two more. Let it go. And then walk towards the front of your mat. And then come into a high lunge. So this is where, again, we're going to grab on. Throw it back. Take it up. Grab onto it. Toss it back. Anything you're holding on to energetically, physically, mentally. No longer. Two more. 
Okay, right arm forward, left arm back, big reach, and then windmill up and around. And then again, we just stay here for a moment to feel ourselves stretch out. So I'm gonna straighten the left leg, pop the right foot in if I need, get my legs stable. So core is activated, legs push down and away, knee is facing up. And as I let the hips move back, I lengthen out of my torso. So lots of good lengthening. And it could just be high, right? I can just grab onto my head. If you do need a block, this is just isn't working, do a block. But I want you to feel that balance of energy between stabilizing in your legs in core and that surrendering trust of just, uh, I don't know if I can hold myself, but I'm gonna try. And then breathe into it. You got it. Okay, and as you're ready, we're gonna come up and reverse the warrior. And I like grabbing onto my wrist and then letting my head go. Open up that whole left side seam. Send that left thigh forward. And then cartwheel the hands down to the floor. Right arm will be your base. Left arm lifts for a twist or palm over ear, straight arm, and feel your left hip pull away from your left wrist. Three, two, and come all the way down. You got it, plank pose. All the way down to your belly. This time, make, uh, take your right arm forward. You can rest your right elbow or your right forehead on it, or you can prop up. Reach your left arm back, back to grab onto your uh, outer left foot. And then either just thigh stretch, heel in, or kick your left thigh up. Feel that opening to the left thigh and the left chest, and then let that go. Switch it out. So you'll make either a forehead pile with your left forearm, and you'll just reach back, thigh stretch. If I want more, I lift up and I kick back. And release it back. Windshield right for the legs a bit if you need, and then press to down guard. Shake it out, bubble your lips, kind of a can feel nice. Okay, final little standing uh, series to again work that release. We'll do some more twists, some more opening. So feel all that. Inhale, full exhale. Take your right leg up. Take your right leg across your body for a twist. So keep that right hip elevated and aim that right knee towards that left wrist. Feel that twist for three. For two, bring it back forward, step your right leg down, drop your left knee. So this time, if you want to just hold like we did, you can. Otherwise, I can reach up and back. I can just hold here to have the more uh, wider. I can hold my foot. Or option three, if this works for you, I'll turn and rest on my left hip. And I'll kind of do what's called like a horizon lunge. But this one, your shoulder does shrug. It's a big side body opening. And the more I can kind of lean towards my thigh, I get a hip, but it doesn't work for everybody's knees. You can be elevated too, if you prefer. So you're picking. Twist as we did last time. Add a thigh if you want. Move towards a horizon lunge on the outer edge of your foot elevated or down. Five breaths. We're feeling all the angst of the twist, the turn, the muscles, and we're finding some amount of breath and release there. Okay, big breath in, big breath out. Slowly make your way back to a lunge and then step your left foot in and then rise up to warrior one. So take your time. So I like to have both hip points forward so I'll widen my stance. Okay, we're gonna take the arms up, lift, and on the exhale, hands to the heart. And for a moment, just gaze at your fingertips. 
feeling kind of that heart connection to your fingertips, that dristy, that focus on the energy of the heart. And then lean on forward. So really important here, gang, tap your right hip back, strengthen your left foot, twist and hover, twist and touch, or if you need a hand on a block, hand down and, tw and twist, right? Try to stay in the warrior one legs unless it hurts your knee. If you get any twerking in your knee, don't do it. So if I'm not touching down, it might be less satisfying to keep the gaze at the fingertips and heart, but turn and twist the waist. You got it. Three, keep that right hip back, left hip firm, two, you got it, windmill up and around, warrior two. So I'm gonna turn around so I'm not facing away from you. We've done this archer pose before. Thumbs up, curl your fingers in, pull that left shoulder back. And we just do a little deeper lunge with breath of fire, okay? So that's that pulsing of the navel center. Gaze at your thumb, ready, go. Breath of fire really moves a lot of stagnancy in the body. It also just invigorates your creative energy, your life force, your vitality. So we're doing a lot today to kind of clean and purge and stoke your digestive tract, which is the way that we naturally throughout the body, right? Assimilate nutrients and release what is not nutritious. <laughs> okay, ready? The waist. And then pause, go deeper. Deep breath in and deep breath out. Close your eyes and channel your energy from your belly out across your heart. Nice. One more breath. Really proud chest. And then straighten your legs parallel your big toes. So you're in a wide leg shape, okay? So for this next one, we're gonna um, kind of be pulling back and twisting. So I'm gonna kind of be doing this. So if you wanna have a block here, a central block, so it's gonna be exhale, inhale, exhale. So I'm just gonna get a little groin stretch as I do this, cause I'm gonna bend the knee and straighten the opposite. So really pull that shoulder blade back, turn your waist. One more on each side and then fold. So you can hold on to your head and let your head be heavy. You can grab onto your wrist creases. Feel like the really the heaviness of your spine, the heaviness of your head kind of traction energy down. Okay, one more breath. And then hands to the waist, long spine, come all the way up. And then final shape for this one, it's gonna be that same warrior one shape, right leg. We're gonna do a uh, revolve triangle. So I like a wider stance. Remember, if this one hurts your knees, that heel can lift for this one. Okay, so we'll take those arms up. And then we're gonna bring the arms forward as we hinge. And then that left arm can come to a block or your shin. And then we're gonna turn and twist. So I'm showing you back heel lifted, which is much less uh, torquing on the knees as I know a lot of you are, are kind of feeling that knee work. So long spine, strong hips for three, for two, and then both hands down, bend your right knee, plank pose to drop to all fours. So we're gonna take that uh, right leg back, bend the knee, and then the left arm reaches back. So it's a little bit of a twist and we're just gonna kick and twist. Open chest, so I kick to the right thigh, open through the right chest. And then switch. So left leg back, bend the knee, reach, grab that foot. Kick and twist, 
Really use your glutes to lift the hips, use your core to twist and spiral the spine. Both knees down, child's pose or down dog. If you're doing child's pose, you can go palms up or you can really vigorously press away from your hands and really stretch your low back. Might be nice to kind of ground. Let your forehead settle. Okay, final sequence, downward facing dog. Big breaths, maybe bubbling, <sighs> sighing. Okay, left leg up. Take your left leg across your body, aim from your right knee to keep the hips buoyant. Feel all that contraction. And then left leg forward, right knee down. Here are all your choices. Right hand on a block, and then I just do the kind of uh, version of the first twist we did that felt good. It can be here. I can reach back and grab my foot. That can be another one. Or I can elevate my hips and kind of hover, or I can ground. So you're choosing which of those shapes would work for you today. And we're gonna hold here five breaths. Okay, slowly unravel, be careful. Set up for a warrior one pose. So slowly coming up, left leg is your forward leg, bringing the hands to me at the heart. Elbows up and then bow towards your hands, soft gaze, bringing the energy of your heart, that 360 degrees energy of your heart towards your hands, towards your focus. And then leaning forward, making sure that left hip goes back, strong right thigh. Remember, you can twist and hover. I can hook, or if it's too much, hand to the block, left arm up. So it's a warrior one twist. You'll get a nice little calf stretch if you can get that right foot uh, to stay down. It's twisting from deep with inside you. Okay, windmill up and around, warrior two. I'm gonna turn. Here is our um, archer shape, thumbs up, fold your fingers in, pull it back. So it's just my left knee going deeper and coming out, kind of like a pulse, right? 30 seconds, breath of fire, here we go. Close, close your eyes or a soft gaze over your left thumb. Ready, go. Right shoulder is back, chest is proud. Hold the leg steady, deep breath in and out. Feel that strength in your core and your legs, that lift through your spine and that expansive chest. And then arms open, parallel your big toes, arms reach up, and then hands to a block or the floor last time. And we're gonna, again, bend the knee and pull the elbows back. So it's an exhale, inhale. And as I'm doing this, I should feel stretches through my groins. So opening up that space. Can be slow if you need, doesn't have to be fast. One more, and then fold. If you wanna place your forehead on a block, feel free. Even if you wanna kind of bend one leg and pull for a moment and then bend the second leg just to get again, a little bit more hip and groin release. But this is your chance to really just ha ah, settle in. Let your body drape. Soak in that silence, that pause. 
And then when you're ready, take another really deep breath in and hands to the waist, come all the way up. And then here's our revolved triangle. So I'm gonna step into that warrior one shape again. Uh, remember, you can pop your back heel up and toes forward on the back leg if that is better for your knee. Both arms up and I'm gonna get long through my waist. I'm gonna hinge forward. Then I'll take that right arm down and then that left arm opens. So again, can be any version. You can even be hand at the waist if you prefer. Tap your left hip in and back, right leg strong, and then grow roots down into your feet. From those roots, extend out through your spine and turn your waist. Head down or relax. And then release both hands down. Okay, so both knees down. So you can repeat what we did last time, which was kicking a leg back and doing a little kick and twist. Okay, option two is to come forward to kind of like a plank, step that foot behind, and you can do kind of a wild thing if you prefer. So if you prefer that, you can do that instead. Otherwise, we'll do two more. On each side of that twist and back release. Switch sides if you've already done one side. If you wanted something else. Good. Let that go. And then when you're ready, push back down dog or child's pose, whatever one felt good for you. <sighs> And take a moment to feel all that settle. Okay. Nice work, you guys. Okay, so let's do a little hip release. So we're gonna find a seat. And we're gonna uh, make that right knee pile. So the right leg crosses over left like you're sitting cross-legged in a chair. Okay, so for this, uh, you might want to sit on a, a blanket if you feel that your um, pelvis is rolling under. Okay, so as I do this, I'm going to pick my left heel up and move it to the right. So now I have a diagonal line from my left hip to my left ankle, right? It's not straight ahead. And then from here, I'm going to turn towards my right foot and I'm going to release down. And I'm going to reach my left heel out. So the more I press my left heel forward and twist, I might get some of that sensation in my left hip, maybe not. Just kind of feeling that at first. Kind of that bowing down, kind of letting the shoulders release a bit. And you can, you can kind of uh, grab onto your foot too to help kind of or press into that foot and that might help. and then slowly come up. So either on your back, do this, make your knee pile, or go ahead and form your knee pile seated, right? If I'm on my back, I just do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna be here, right, right? So sitting up nice and tall, and either hands back to bow, hands on ankles and bowing, or hands forward, sometimes just sitting up tall. <laughs> is plenty. Now you can also add any amount of side stretching if you that would feel good or neck releasing. You know, um, I want you to kind of add on whatever would feel good. If you want to twist again to the opposite side, do that. I'm kind of feeling like maybe a neck release. So maybe just let your head lower. And just sink in for about five to 10 breaths, just long, deep breaths. Broadening collarbones. Letting your jaw soften, your head. Last few.
And then slowly come up, nice and slow. Go ahead and uncross your legs, feet flat. We're gonna neutralize the spine. So shoulders on your back. I have my fingers forward. You're welcome to put your hands to the side and then lift your hips. So press into your feet. Let your neck release or look down at your navel if that bothers your neck to put it back. Feel your glutes strengthen, your shoulders, the rear shoulders, and release the front body. And then lower down. Lift up Navasana, re-engage the core. One time Ardha Navasana, toes out, look towards your toes, feel your core. Come back up Navasana and then forward fold. So it can be a forward fold with hands back. You can also have soft knees, stretch the low back. And then slowly come up, we'll do our second side. So left knee, like you're sitting cross-legged in a chair, knee pile, right leg, move it to the left. And again, it may not move a lot, just as much as you can, but do flex your toes back because that makes the difference. Turn your body to the right and fold. And I'm pushing out from my right heel actively as I twist to the right. Keep releasing, keep letting the spine get heavy away from the opposite side. And then slowly coming up, knee pile on your back. Sukhumukhasana, or you're gonna stay up here. And again, you could do neck releases, twists, side bends, anything that feels good. And about 10 breaths, so just drop in. Really feeling the sensation of sinking, dropping, releasing. Even if there's a lot of sensation, like this pose for me is like, it's really hard to relax because there's a lot going on. So it's like relaxing what I can. Maybe it's the chest or maybe it's the shoulders, right? Or it's just that kind of choosing where I can find that space to drop in. A few more focused breaths into those spots that you might want. And then last breath, slowly make your way up. We're gonna uncross the legs. If you're on your back, just go to bridge. Otherwise, we're gonna do that reverse alter. If you're on your back, just do a little crunch. We'll go Navasana. If you're on your back, just do a little crunch and tabletop, no problem. If you're on your back, extend your legs and you'll just do a little crunch with your legs extended. If you're on your back, legs to the sky. If you're seated, forward fold. And then we'll take a deep breath and we'll all meet on our backs. So if you would prefer to take a longer like, headstand or any kind of inversion, because that's how we're just gonna end is in a long inversion so uh, that you can integrate so all we're looking for is uh, hips overhead. So that can be legs on the wall. So you can just put your ankles up a wall or on a sofa, you can rest your calves. That can be a way to kind of elevate the legs. Um, we could also uh, place a block underneath our sacrum. Could be supported bridge for a longer hold or legs here. But I just want to get your legs up so that we can kind of drain the energy of the legs. So we know Sagittarius is ruling um, kind of the hips and the, the legs here. So we want to kind of drain again that energy, move it to the heart. And so I want you just to hold and just kind of take in being upside down that inversion to kind of invert, shake up your world.
Feel your body really settle. So as much as you can, kind of focusing your energy on the space between your eyes or the center of your brain. Just kind of really calming your thoughts or really focusing that mental energy at the brain. Maybe like 30 more seconds, really get quiet. So if you notice your mind just trying to distract you or going off in thought, just pick a focal point. Just really hold steady your awareness on that physical part of your body. And I would suggest the head. Maybe really focus on your breath coming in and out of your nostrils, that center part of your brain. Just keep calling the mind back. And then nice and slow, when you're ready, you can bend the knees if you are in a position like that. And now you can feel free to stay if that's what you'd like to do, take an extra moment. So I'll invite you either to lie on your back or you can stay in your inversion. Or if you wanna, if you still feel like you want some balancing, we'll do some alternate nostril breath. But really just tune into what you need. You may not feel that you need the alternate nostril breath. You might feel like just lying on your back feels like the perfect way to end. So just really, it's uh, no right or wrong, no shoulds, just what do I feel like I need? If you do want alternate nostril breath, we'll fold the index and middle finger down to the base of the thumb. You'll use your thumb and your uh, ring finger to plug and unplug. I'll just guide you through and I'll let you go. And we'll just take a couple, uh, couple moments. So plug the right, breathe in to the left. Plug left, breathe out right. In right. Out left. In left. Out right. In right, out left, in left, out right, in right, out left, in left, out right, in right, out left. And then just keep going if you need, otherwise you can just rest. Take a moment. Really feeling the experience of your energy in this moment. What's it like to feel your body to feel the energy emanating through and around and within your body. Really notice how you can take any aspect of this practice into your day. Maybe you found a sense of quiet that you can bring in or you found a steadiness. You found a sense of strength or surrender or hope or peace, right? Anything that you've touched, just know you can command that. That is something that you can create. So just noticing what you can bring with you. Because part of the learning of the self note is not to just abandon all of it, right? But it's to take within it the wisdom and discard what about the process of it, right? What about the experience is no longer serving? So take out the skill, take the wisdom, take the learning, the insight, and release out all the mucky muck that would keep you stuck or would keep that hidden or misappropriated. 
So when you feel ready to come up, coming up, rubbing those hands together again, letting the thumbs touch your heart, remembering your intention for today or this time period between now and Monday when we'll have that eclipse and that activation that will support us releasing out that which is stuck or heavy or untrue so that we can truly liberate ourselves to move towards greater truths, more expansive visions, more embodied presence of what is real, what is enduring. So lift your palms up, feel that stretch across your spine, feel that creative energy, that life force within you that is looking for your direction. Feel it, sense it, take within you whatever it is that you want to create and strengthen in your day and then turn your palms out and send it out and away. Color your field. Then take a deep breath in. And so it is, ah. The light in me honors the light in you, friends. So grateful that you practiced today. I look forward to seeing you Monday, 4.30. Sorry, it's been so crazy. <laughs> Monday, 4.30, but the eclipse happens in the morning. So if you wanna set your alarm for about 8.15 and to take a moment to meditate, to be still,